I wanted to share with you guys a discrete analog circuit I've been working on recently. Most of the electronics I do is digital, and that's what I'm most comfortable with, but it's fun to play with analog stuff from time to time and learn more about it. So what I've built here uh, is kind of two circuits, and this one's the main one. This one's just there to test the other one with. This one over here is a power supply control circuit with uh, soft power buttons for on and off, and a current limiting feature. And this one over here is an adjustable load, uh, where I can use the potentiometer to change the amount of current that that load draws. And that's only there for testing the power supply circuit. So in this video I'll go over the reasons for building this, uh, what I wanted to achieve with it, I'll show you what it does, and I'll talk through the circuit diagram explaining how it does it. So let's see this in action then. I've got a multimeter here that's set to amps mode, and that's measuring the amount of current that's being drawn by the adjustable load over here. Currently it's at zero because the power is turned off. So I'm going to turn the power on now. Soft power switches, so there's just a, a sort of tactile touch to turn it on. You see the power lights lit up, and um, I'm going to turn this knob to the maximum. And this is the current limiting feature of the power supply, so if the current goes above a certain amount, the power supply will automatically turn off. So you can see right now it's hardly drawing any current at all, but if I turn up the amount of current, uh, the current the load draws, you can see we've got to 80 milliamps now, 200 milliamps, 300 milliamps, 360, and it turned off at around 400 milliamps, I believe. So we can do that one more time, show that again. Power is on. Turning the current up. We've got 330 milliamps, 400, and it's turned off. So if I turn the uh, current limit down a bit here, if I set that to, I don't know, that's around the 2 o'clock position. Turn the power on. Now if I uh, turn up the amount of current being drawn, 80 milliamps, 140, just shy of 200 milliamps, that one turned off. What I'm going to do is turn that on with the current limit turned up a little bit more. If I adjust this current to a level that I'm comfortable with, oops, wrong way. If I set this to draw 200 milliamps, Now I can turn the current limit down until it turns off. It was just there. Now I should find it cuts the power if it gets to about 200 milliamps. There we go. So that's what this circuit does. It's a soft power supply with a current limiting feature uh, which automatically cuts the power if the current drawn goes above that limit. So let's have a look at the schematic. This area on the left here is essentially a simple soft power circuit. The MOSFET is what is primarily switching the power on and off. Uh, there's a resistor which is pulling its gate high. It's a p-channel MOSFET so it conducts when the gate is low. The resistor pulls it high by default, unless I push the on button, in which case the gate gets pulled low and the MOSFET starts conducting. The output of that MOSFET it then goes through a resistor in the LED to, to light up the LED, and then I have a second MOSFET in series with that. It's another P-channel MOSFET, but it's source and drain in the opposite direction here, and its gate is permanently wired to the ground rail. It's a fairly standard way to use a MOSFET to achieve a zero voltage diode in this kind of polarity protection circuit. Its purpose here isn't exactly polarity protection. Uh, the reason for it is that when I have a load connected which has capacitance, what tended to happen was the, the circuit here would try to turn off, but the capacitors in the load circuit would then feed voltage back down the power rails uh, and into this circuit and turn it back on again. And I put the second MOSFET in here to protect against that, and it, it sort of prevents that voltage from coming back in. So after the two MOSFETs there, we have a switched power rail which we can pass through to the load circuit, but before we do we're going to pass it through a 1 ohm shunt here and the purpose of this is that whatever current the load circuit is drawing it will cause a voltage drop across the 1 ohm shunt. 
So if I can then compare the voltage on either side of the one ohm shunt, I can work out how much current is flowing. This is a very standard technique. This is how most ammeters work, I believe. So on the source side of the one ohm shunt, I have a simple voltage divider. I think this is about a 50% divider. The exact value doesn't matter too much, but I want it to be roughly halfway through the power rails. And on the far side of the shunt, on the load side of the shunt, I have another voltage divider using a potentiometer to vary the, the division ratio. And these both feed into an op amp. And the op amp will basically function as a comparator here. It'll compare these two voltages and its output will go high or low as a result. And it's the output of that op amp that actually then feeds back through an NPN transistor uh, to control the gate of the first MOSFET. So if you recall, this first MOSFET will be on so long as its gate is held low and there's a pull-up resistor pulling it high. When I push the button, the button pulls it low. But once the circuit's already on, so long as the amount of current drawn isn't more than the amount that was configured, the op amp will, will have a high output, and this will then turn on this NPN transistor down here. It will cause a current to flow through the base of the NPN transistor, which will then allow another current to flow from its uh, collector to its emitter and pull that MOSFET's gate to ground. In terms of practical details, the 1 ohm current shunt is actually implemented using four 1 ohm resistors here. That's because I'm using quarter watt resistors, and I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to be pulling too much power over them. So I've rigged these 1 ohm resistors up as two parallel pairs. Each parallel pair is essentially a half ohm resistor overall with a half watt total power dissipation capacity. And putting them both in series uh, results in a 1 ohm resistance with a half watt power capacity. Anecdotally testing, I've never found that any of the components in this power supply circuit get remotely hot, not the MOSFETs nor the resistors. Um, so I think everything is well within tolerances there. Next up we have the variable load, and that's a much simpler circuit. Uh, all we really have here is a MOSFET which is controlling current flow based on the voltage applied to its gate, and the voltage on the gate comes from a potential divider. That's basically all that's going on here. There's a 10 ohm resistance in series with the MOSFET, and that's to limit the maximum current that can possibly flow here to around 500 milliamps. That's 5 volts divided by 10 ohms. Again, in terms of practical details on the breadboard, this is implemented using 10 100 ohm resistors in parallel with each other, which has an overall resistance of 10 ohms, but has 10 times the power dissipation capacity. And that's, and that's again because these are not power resistors I'm using, these are basic quarter watt resistors, and a single 10 ohm resistor would not be able to deal with this much current. So as for the motivation behind this project and the design goals and so on, um, partly I wanted to do this because it felt like something that was approachable, something that I felt like I knew how the various bits of it should work, and analog circuits aren't my forte, so yeah, it's nice when I think of something which I think I can actually do. But there's also a practical goal here because a couple of times recently I've actually made mistakes when I'm working on other circuits which this would have saved me from. So for example, a few months ago I shorted the power lines on uh, a breadboard power supply, um, and that led to it no longer regulating the voltage to 5 volts, so it was passing through 7 or 8 volts to the, to the circuit I was running, uh, which, which really wasn't right, and it took me a while to realise it had done that. On another occasion, um, I put my EEPROM in the circuit backwards, which obviously started drawing a lot of current, um, got very hot and smelly. Luckily I smelled it and turned off the power before anything went badly wrong. I also plugged my ARM breakout board's power in backwards on one occasion, so that immediately shorted through the ARM chip, so there's another kind of thing I want to avoid. And just in general, when I'm messing around with circuits, I might accidentally uh, put something in the wrong place, and it might start drawing a lot of current, and I'd like to cut the power before it does any damage. A lot of people are interested in reverse voltage protection circuits, and that, that solves some of these problems, like the one with the ARM breakout board, for example, would have been fine if I'd put the right kind of protection on that board itself. But that doesn't solve all of these issues, and I kind of figured that for me the best way to do reverse voltage protection is probably just to put a diode across the power rails, and then rely on something like this to cut the power if that diode ever ends up drawing all the current. So just to demonstrate one of those use cases for example, uh, this is currently configured to the same kind of 200 milliamp limit that I set up just now, um, and if I turn it on, the load's drawing what, 80 milliamps there. Um, and if I short across the power rails, as if I was messing around with the circuit and doing something wrong, you can see immediately the power got turned off there before any significant current was drawn. So that's how this all works. I hope you found that interesting. In terms of next steps, I'm probably going to build a version of this on VarioBoard or something like that, or prototype board, and I'll start using that uh, in line with my power supply in all my projects. If you guys are interested, I could also do a walkthrough building this up from scratch. 
uh, just so that you guys can see how that's done. And I'd also love to hear any feedback about, you know, whether you like this sort of thing and also whether I've made any mistakes here, because as I said, analog electronics is not my forte and I'm really happy to learn when I'm making mistakes. Hopefully that's what we're all here for.